In this watercolor tutorial, we are going to be painting easy, beginner-friendly moon watercolor bookmarks. This watercolor bookmark tutorial is perfect for beginners and a fun way to dip your toes in watercolor painting. It's also great as a relaxing watercolor painting session for any type of level of watercolor artist. Before I get started, I'm going to go over my supplies real quick. So I have scraps watercolor paper, the white here, this is from Arches, it's cold press, and then I have black cardstock here that I used. And the paints that I used are from KMS Watercolor. So she makes beautiful handmade shimmery paints and I'll link her shop in the description below. For these bookmarks, you don't have to use the same paint that I did. You can use whatever paint you have on hand. I also used my size 8 Princeton Neptune round brush. And then a few other random supplies that I used is white gouache from Windsor Newton, a corner rounder here that I used to round the corners, a hole puncher, and ribbon. You might also want to use a spray varnish to protect your watercolor bookmarks. All of the supplies that I used are linked below in the description for you. I also have a free watercolor class and some watercolor challenges for you that you might like linked in the description too. Now let's get started. So the first step in making these moon bookmarks is to get some scrap pieces of watercolor paper ready. So here I have some scrap pieces of paper that I trimmed to the sizes that I would like for my bookmarks. and. This paper here, the white paper, is cold press paper from Arches. And this black paper here is actually cardstock. It's not watercolor paper, but it's pretty thick. And I feel like it'll be a lot of fun to use the black cardstock as bookmarks, especially since I will be using shimmery and iridescent paint. And then you'll also want to get out your paints and figure out the kind of paints that you would like to use. So here I plan on using my KMS watercolor paints. So her paints are handmade. The ones that I will be using are shimmery colors and some of them have glitter in them too. And I love to use these to paint moons. Of course, you don't have to use shimmery or glittery paints for your watercolor moons. You can use whatever paints that you have. You might also want to check out Metallic Accents from Art Philosophy. This is a good pan set to use for moons. And also this Fine Tech Iridescent paint set. This is also a lot of fun to use for watercolor moons. So once you have your paints out and your watercolor scraps ready, you then want to find a round object that you can trace for your moon. So here, this is actually a pan from Metallic Accents here, and it's actually perfect for my moon. It's like the size that I would like. Now I'm going to go ahead and trace this onto my paper, and I'll be using my watercolor pencils to do this. These are my favorite Castell watercolor pencils. You can also use regular pencil too. It's also important to keep in mind that if you plan on punching a hole at the top, you might want to leave some space. I also plan to make two of my moons to be crescent moons, so I actually need to erase some of this. Now I'm just kind of drawing this crescent moon a little bit. I've learned that actually from, from tracing this one here that it is easier to start with the middle moon, that is the full moon, and then trace the crescent moons below and above the full moon. After you trace your moons onto your paper, you're now ready to paint. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I'm going to paint the single moon with like a starry night background. And then I'll also show you how I paint the moon face. I'm going to start with this one moon here. And for these moons, I'm going to be using the wet and wet method. So first I'll wet the entire moon with some water. So I'm taking my 
Princeton Neptune brush here, my size 8 round, and I'm putting it in my water jar and I'm loading it with water and then I am just going to wet this entire moon here. And I'm trying to be careful about seeing inside the lines of this moon. I don't want to paint outside of the line. Okay, and then I'm going to pick a color for this moon. I plan on using my blues here from KMS Watercolor. These glittery blues and maybe this iridescent color. And then I also have this one here. It's called Disco. So I'll first start with this iridescent color here. So now I'm just kind of putting water in here to reactivate this paint. And then once my brush is loaded with this paint here, I'm just going to kind of drop it in and do my own thing. You can look up photos of the moon and try to replicate it and make it look like our moon, or you could just do your own thing and make it look like a moon, but it doesn't have to look like our moon. And then I'm also taking this other blue here and dropping that in. And then I'm going to take this disco here. Okay, I'm cleaning my brush a little bit and then it does still have some water in it and I'm going to kind of move these paints around. Now this paper is black, so I want to be sure I do still have some of that black paper that will be exposed because I don't, like I, I want some variation in my moon. I do want some dark areas. So I'm gonna leave some of that black paper unpainted in areas. And if you're using white paper, you, you can do the same thing. You'll want to be sure to leave some of the white of your paper unpainted. Then if you feel like you added too much paint in an area, you can always take your brush and then kind of like drag off some of the paint. Okay, and we'll let that completely dry before adding on the next layer. So as we wait for this moon here to dry, let's go ahead and start on this bookmark here with the three moons. So we're going to approach this kind of the same way. You'll want to get your paints ready, figure out the colors you would like to use, and then you'll want to load your brush with water, and you'll want to wet the entire moon. And it'll be good to work one moon at a time, so let's just worry about one moon here. You can wet all of the moons at the same time if you would like. But I feel like for beginners, if you're a beginner, that it might be easier to work with one moon at a time. And now I am going to choose a paint to use. And I think I'm going to choose this one here. This is called the Big Dipper from KMS Watercolor. And I'm going to drop this in some areas. Notice how I am leaving some of the white on my paper and painted. And then I'm cleaning my brush and I'm going to grab another color here. I'm thinking maybe this lighter blue. I'm going to drop that in. And then I'm going to take this other color here. So you can add however many colors you want, however much paint you want. It's really all about what you would like. And then of course I want to add some of this disco. And then you'll approach the same technique with the other two moons. Now we're ready to paint the second layer on these moon bookmarks. 
So if you use dark watercolor paper like this, black cardstock or black watercolor paper, you'll want to focus on more of the lighter watercolor paints to paint with. Even white gouache here would be really good to use to really increase the contrast of your moon bookmark. So I might use this for the black one. And then for the watercolor moon bookmarks that you paint on regular watercolor paper that is white, you'll want to focus on really using like those darker colors to really make the moons pop. So while we wait for this bookmark here to fully dry, let's go ahead and finish off this one here that has the one moon. As I said earlier, for the dark watercolor paper like this, you'll want to focus on the lighter paints. So I'm going to be using this white gouache here from Windsor Newton. And I also might add some of this iridescent here and this disco here. And I might also add this opal here. So as you can see, I am now focusing on the lighter watercolor paints instead of using these darker blues. I'll first use this opal paint here, so I'm just going to reactivate it. And then I will go ahead and add it to areas on this moon. Notice how I'm, I'm kind of dabbing my brush. I'm not like painting like this. I'm just kind of dabbing my brush here and there. I'm also trying to leave some of that black paper like right here, here, and here those darker black areas, I'm trying to leave that alone. And then I'm going to add this other pink color. Over here where there's a dark edge on the spoon, I'm going to kind of outline it with this opal paint. And then I'm also going around the edges just to kind of make this moon look more refined so it doesn't look so irregular. And then I'm cleaning my brush and I'm loading it with a little bit of water. And I'm going to drag off some paint in areas on this moon because I feel like I kind of added a little too much. And then now I'm going to add stars. So I will be adding stars with this disco paint. So I'm, I'm really wetting this here with my brush. I'm adding a lot of water in my brush like this. I'm going to make paint splatters. So as you can see, it's very, very wet. And then I'm going to stick out my finger like this and add some paint splatters. Now your desk will get kind of splattered. So if there's anything you don't want to get paint on, you want to make sure that you put those away. You can also add stars by using a tiny brush. Here I have my size 4 silver black velvet brush and I'm using like the very tip and you can just kind of add those in too like that. You can also do the star background if you use regular watercolor paper that is white. It'll look good with any kind of paper. I think I want to go ahead and add some of this iridescent paint. So in this final stage, you want to add any more details that you'd like to add or any other colors. Now on to the final layer on this bookmark. So because I used regular watercolor paper that is white, I'm going to focus on adding the darker colors. So I'm going to add some more of this darker glittery blue here. I like to make my moons dark along the edge because it just really helps make them pop. It gives them more, more dimension, especially if you're using regular watercolor paper like I am for this one that's not black. And then I'm also going along the edge and making it look more refined. I'm going to do this with all of the moons. It is important though to keep some of the white of your paper unpainted, like these areas here.
For this moon, my black paper, I decided that I would like to add some white gouache and some urias. So that's what I'm doing now, especially along the edges because this will really help make the moon pop off of the black paper. Notice how I'm just kind of wiggling my brush around, blending this white gouache into my paint slightly. Now I'm just kind of dabbing this white gouache in some areas on my moon. When you're done painting your moon bookmarks, it's now time to finish them off. So I have some thread here for my bookmarks from local craft stores and also online. This thread here is from an Etsy shop called Fringe and Rose where I also buy handmade watercolor paper. So I'll go ahead and link her shop in the description of this video. But you'll want to have some thread or ribbon ready and you'll also want a hole puncher. And if you would like, you can also use a corner rounder. And as I said in the beginning of this video, everything that I use in this tutorial, I've linked below for you if you'd like to check them out. So I'm first going to round the corners of my bookmarks. And at this point, you may want to spray your bookmarks down with a varnish spray for a protection. So I will link the one that I use in the description of this video. So then after you spray down your bookmarks and you let them cure for like an hour or so, depending on the spray varnish that you use, you can now hole punch your bookmarks where you'd like to tie ribbon. And then you can insert your ribbon. So the way I like to do this is I like to fold my ribbon in half like this. And then I like to insert it from the back. Like that. And you don't want to pull all the way through. Then you want to take the ends of your ribbon or thread right here. Pull them through that loop in the back and then tighten the ribbon. So this is how I like to do my ribbon. This one here was tied so it's kind of crinkly right here but we'll see how it goes. So again you fold your ribbon in half like this and then you insert it from the back and then you don't pull all the way through. Instead, you take the ends here and then put them through the loop in the back. And that is it for this tutorial. Don't forget to tag me on Instagram when you post your bookmarks and use the hashtag AllisonLineArtTutorial. I would love to see yours. Don't forget that there are some other moon and bookmark tutorials that you might like. I'll link those in the description below for you as well as my free watercolor class and watercolor challenges. Thank you so much and I will see you in the next video.